Hello, I'm Andrew Rainey and welcome to Kickstart This, when I share some of the best crowdfunding video game projects that I've found on Kickstarter over the last few weeks. Before we dive into the live projects that I think are worth a look just now, let's check in on some of the projects that have featured in Episodes 2 and Episode 3. So in Episode 2, I featured queer sci-fi visual novel The Sky Left Us, and it managed to smash its funding goal of $35,000, eventually reaching over $46,000. So a massive well done to everyone at Event Horizon Crew. Another game from Episode 2 was the gorgeous action-adventure Aveliana from solo French developer The French Dev. Now, if you've been following Kickstart this on Twitter, you'll know that we were rooting for this title. And as the deadline got closer to the 12,000 euro goal, it hadn't been hit. Honestly, I was ready to get my wallet out and start chucking money at him. But in the last few days, there was a small miracle and the French Dev seen an influx of pledges that pushed him well over the initial goal, raising over 15,000 euros. I genuinely cannot wait to play that one. In episode three, I showcased the eerie Hong Kong inspired name of the will. Its odd art style clearly resonated with gamers and Zai Hike Studios smashed its target, reaching 170% of its funding goal. And lastly, Crispy Creative Space Opera A Long Journey to an Uncertain End also reached its funding goal with just a few days to spare, raising $54,000. Although it wasn't quite enough to reach the $60,000 Switch target, but it hopefully will appear on that console at some point because I'd really love to get my hands on it. Um, unfortunately, one of the games I featured in episode three, Jaguar Warrior Sons of the Tally Nanti, failed to reach its funding goal. However, I have noticed that developer Hugo Corona has relaunched it with a lower initial target and more details of the project, including a Switch version. Now, as someone who has had Kickstarter projects fail, it's great to see him quickly address some of the issues of the original crowdfunder and relaunch it. Now, this game looks gorgeous. I'd love to see a Zelda-esque game steeped in Mexican and Aztec mythology. So I'll be putting up Twitter updates about his progress on his new campaign, and hopefully we can help him meet his funding goals. But his story underlines how much your pledges matter. Because of the money you have donated to crowdfunding projects, four developers and studios are now well on their way to making something beautiful and unique that we will get to play. And that's why I love the crowdfunding model, and that's why I make these videos. Um, so if you love helping indie developers crowdfund their projects, please hit the subscribe button and share this video to give them a bit more exposure in order to get them more donations and pledges. Let's take a look at some of the games vying for your cash on Kickstarter. First off, I'll be looking at stop motion platform adventure Vocal Bulantis before meeting a permadeath end in the action RPG Hollow Mento. Then I'm going to end with a pair of absolutely cracking platformers. Sacked sees you play as a sentient sword wielding pillow, while Little Nemo and the Nightmare Fiends is an indie game based on the comics of Windsor McKay. Let's jump in. Vocal Bulantis is described as a stop motion love story in the form of a co-op platform adventure game. The odd sounding title is the name of the world that the characters inhabit, and it's like a floating land akin to Laputa in uh, Studio Ghibli's Castle in the Sky. Now what makes it stand out is its animation style, it's what really grabbed me when I first saw it. One of the first projects I ever backed on Kickstarter was another stop motion animated game called Night and the Ghost Lights. Unfortunately, the development and animation style proved too difficult for them to do and the game never saw the light of day. So I'm really hoping that developer Isben Rabin and his team can pull this one off. And judging by the trailer and the project details, they are certainly confident that they can. The level and time that goes into stop motion animation is huge. So you know that this is a game coming from a place of love. If you're looking for a short and sweet adventure in the similar vein to Unravel or Little Nightmares, then this is definitely one for you. The world building looks amazing and the level of the detail in the design is just unbelievable. The animators and designers are seasoned veterans who have worked with Ardman, Laika and Lego, so you can expect something really special. Although the game is targeting all major platforms, the crowdfunder is specifically for the Steam release. There are some hidden stretch goals and I'm really hoping one of them is a Switch. Now, because this is a co-op game, many, if not all of the pledge tiers give two of everything, which is a really nice touch by the developers. So if you're looking for a copy of the game, then a donation of 18 euros will get you not one, but two copies of the game and two demos so that you can share them with your friends. This is an early bug rate limited to 300 people. So once it's gone, you'll be looking at 25 euros instead. 
For the collectors amongst you, the Kickstarter exclusive Friends Pack sits at 165 euros and offers two digital photo books, two invitations to the L Developer Discord community, two digital soundtracks, two pins of the protagonist Kurt and Carla for you and your friends name the credits and you'll also get two Steam keys for the game. If you have money to burn, the Angels of Vocabulantis tier is looking for donations of 8,500 euros. For this massive sum, you get co-exec producer credit and you get time with the creative team twice a year to check in, as well as tickets to the launch party. You also get a ton of goodies, including your photo and the game, and you also get to take home one of the set pieces as well, which is just magical. If you want an open world permadeath action RPG that looks like a cross between Zelda and Ashen with a dash of Dark Souls, then Hollow Mental is the one that you're looking for. This indie game transports you to a fantasy land called Eventide Hollow, which was once a lovely kingdom, but as tends to happen in RPGs, has succumbed to some form of curse caused by a mysterious book called The Hollow Mental. The Hollow Mental traps the souls of those who possess it, and if they die, their essence is added to the pages of the book. Now, you will use the Hollow Mental to navigate the land and help rebuild the settlements that you find within it in order to progress. There are also procedurally generated dungeons to tackle as well. So what made Hollow Mental stand out for me was its minimalist graphic style. Um, it was like Annapurna's Ashen, but unlike that game, the world seems more accessible and certainly brighter. It definitely seems to err more towards Breath of the Wild. You have a castle town, you've got Desert Temple, the Eastern Temple with its beautiful cherry blossoms. The map is filled with diverse regions that you can explore. This beautiful and ambitious game comes from indie game developer Sean Weech, and even in its early alpha state, what he has shown in the crowdfunding campaign looks spectacular. Not only that, the roadmap he's given for the game is very open and transparent and something I really appreciated as a potential backer. Also supporting the game is Deck13, who are known for the Sud series, but who recently published CrossCode, which I'm currently enjoying on the Switch. Um, they'll be helping Sean with marketing, PR and quality assurance, but the small team still needs funds to finish the actual game itself. If you're looking for just a copy of the game, there's an early bird discounted version of $15, otherwise it's going to be $20. However, I would go for the $25 tier, which also has an early bird level of $20, which gets you a copy of the game plus early access to the game as well. Now, for those who have watched past episodes of Kickstart This, you'll know that I love the tiers where we get some merch for our pledges. Unfortunately, Hollow Mento doesn't really have any. However, what it does have is a $125 tier where you can become an in-game NPC, which kind of makes up for it. If you've ever wanted to see yourself as a statue in the game and have $1,000 lying around, then you're in luck. Pledges of $1,000 and over can get a likeness as a statue in the game. Not only that, but you can also choose where the statue goes. Sacked is a silky smooth platformer from Canadian indie developer Kelly Eros. In it, you play Sack, a pillow who has been brought to life and thrust on a quest to save the realm of dreams. Armed with a sword and shield, our cotton hero will jump and slash his way through 15 hand-drawn levels in what is an ode to the classic 16-bit era platformer. What made Sack stand out for me is it is just gorgeous. It might pay homage to classic games, but this is a full HD experience with incredibly detailed backdrops and environments. It has a slight Hollow Knight feel to it, but it's erring more towards Mario than Hollow Knight's grim dark design. It's very colourful and bright. And the character design is on point as well, because he is essentially a white pillow with eyes. Um, a lot of effort has gone into making Sack emotive, and it really pays off. One of the great things is that Sax creators have made them inclusive, so you can also change Sax's colour scheme and pronouns as well. There's also an RPG-like character progression system, so you can hone abilities and skills, as well as gathering weapon upgrades. Now, the raft of enemies that Sack will face are also just amazing, and they feel like they've jumped out of a Saturday morning cartoon. There are over 140 creatures to face off against, from crafty goblins to ninja eagles. Each level will also end with a classic boss fight. Sack promises that nostalgic platformer feel, but for the modern era, with challenging gameplay, smooth graphics, and a whole host of secrets to uncover. As well as receiving the base game, there are plans for free additional content post-launch. It is also targeting not just PC, but PlayStation, Xbox, and of course the Nintendo Switch. There are also further plans to roll out for Steam, for Mac and Linux, Stadia, and mobile as well. 
To get a copy of Sacked on PC or console, you'll need to pledge at least 20 Canadian dollars, which is roughly about 12 pounds. This tier also comes with exclusive HD wallpapers and a digital art book, as well as your name in the Sacked Hall of Fame. It's a really generous offering and I'm sure it will appeal to many gamers. There's no physical reward tier, but for 250 Canadian dollars, there's a tier dubbed the Hero of Ages, and it gets you early access, your name in the game in-game Hall of Legends, access to a private Discord channel, a digital copy of the game, soundtrack and art book, plus an in-game statue of yourself as well. Now the top tier is the ultimate creature feature, which is for pledges of 5,000 Canadian dollars and above. Not only do you get your own mon monument in the game, but you get to work hand in hand with the designers to create a bonus level end boss. This is limited to only one lucky person, so if you have the money to burn, there you go. Lastly, we have Little Nemo and the Nightmare Fiends. Again, it's another 2D platformer, but whereas Sacked is paying homage to the classic 16-bit era, Little Nemo is actually based on a comic strip by American cartoonist Windsor McKay. Little Nemo debuted way back in 1905 and was published in the New York Herald. The developers are using the work which is now in the public domain to create a platformer akin to Shanty or Demon's Crest. Developer Chris Totten is bringing this 100 year old work back to life, being faithful to the character design and style of McKay while making it more colourful and accessible for the modern audience. Now it's genuinely great to see game developers turning to unheard of or forgotten sources for inspiration. I had never heard of McKay but his work influenced Walt Disney among many others. He was also one of the first film animators and created Gertie the Dinosaur, an animated film in 1914 and possibly the first ever one featuring a dinosaur. He seems like a bit of a pioneer, so it's amazing to see his work be revived almost a hundred years later after the comic strip finished. So what about the game itself? Well, you get to control four characters. Nemo, the magic wielding princess, the mischievous clown Flip, and the royal guard Peony, who is an original character created just for the game. It's a bit like new Super Mario Brothers in a sense, in that each character has their own abilities and ways to tackle the challenges of the levels. The levels themselves draw heavily on McKay's surrealist style, with hand-drawn animations that look like classic animated movies. It's just a really enchanting idea that I'm still pretty much in awe of. There are many stretch goals to this that will see more levels added and more stories added to the game, so I'm really hoping this manages to stretch well beyond its original goal. Now for a digital copy of the game on either Stream or Switch, you'll be looking at pledges of $20 or more. This will also get your name in the credits and access to the backer Discord channel. The $100 hero tier not only gets you the game, but also a digital art book, digital soundtrack, downloadable paper craft figures, plus your own exclusive poster print. If you'd prefer physical copies of the art book, soundtrack, and a t-shirt, then you're looking at the $500 VIP tier. If you want to get all the previous rewards, plus help design your own character for the game and receive a contributor credit, you can pledge $2,500. That's all from me. I'll be keeping an eye on the progress of all these projects and helping them out by spreading the word on Twitter, at Andrew Rainey and at kick underscore start underscore this. So feel free to come and follow me and spread the word even further. If you can help out these developers, then please click on the project link in the comments to give them a donation. If you cannot afford to donate, I'm sure they would appreciate it if you could share the link to their Kickstarter page across all your social media channels. If you love crowdfunding and video games as much as I do, and you want to hear about exciting new campaigns, remember to hit the subscribe and the alert buttons. I'm hoping to grow this channel and start using any funds I create to, uh, to create a Kickstarter pot that will help give developers a little push over the finish line as and when they need it. And if you are someone who has just launched a campaign or you're about to, then please get in touch as I'm looking to expand the channel and interview developers about their crowdfunding experience. Until next time.